We were blessed this Sunday night to be a part of a community outreach in a place called Torrey Hole Park in Elizabethtown, North Carolina. The significance of this place is where a revolutionary battle took place, where a small group of patriots crossed a river to overtake a large number of British loyalist Tories, not only killing commanders, but pushing them down into a ravine, which is now called Torrey Hole. It took courage, it took bravery, it took faith to cross that river at night. That moment, they decided this is our time, this is our moment to do something about the oppression that we're facing, and they wanted to do something about it. I see in the news today, every day, oppression against Christians, things that are going on. I've seen a high school football coach in Washington State today, Coach Kennedy. He's being persecuted, investigated, because he prays with his team. What about Kim Davis, who, standing on her faith, standing on the Word of God, would not issue same-sex marriage licenses, and we've seen her go to jail for her beliefs. People are being persecuted as Christians, and then there's a lot of Christians that are still on the other side of the river. They haven't crossed to do battle. They're over there on the other side, afraid to cross the river of fear, the river of losing their friends, losing their family, or the river of persecution, losing their job. Whatever that river is that you're afraid to wade across, we've got to realize and recognize that there is a revolution that has started and been started over 2,000 years ago. It was started on a lonely hill with a cross, with a Savior hanging there, bleeding and dying, for you and I. As he died on that cross, as he bled, he was thinking of you, he was thinking of me. And when he died, he rose again the third day, overcoming death, hell, and the grave. What is a revolution? A revolution is a fundamental change in power and organization. That's exactly what Christ done on the cross. He saved us from our sins. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. He re redeemed mankind. God was in Christ, redeeming, him, redeeming us unto himself. The Bible says, he that was without sin became sin for you and I, that we may have the righteousness of God in him. God did all of that for you and I because he loves us today. He started that revolution. He took that power from the enemy and gave it to us, his children, the Holy Spirit that dwells within us, that empowers us as servants. When I look in Revelation 1.18, I see a picture of this revolution. It says, And I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Christ took the keys of death and hell. He took that power away. Now my question for you is this today. With all the persecution going on, with the way our country's headed, definitely not in the direction we were supposed to be going, especially re realizing where we came from, how we were started, what the beliefs were from the people that were even involved in the revolution, American Revolution, independence, liberty, freedom. Those things are trying to be taken away from a spiritually, from a spiritual standpoint when they're taking prayer out of school, the, the battle to get God out of school, the battle to take God out of municipalities and take God away from anything of a public venue. They want Christians to be ashamed, to be afraid to proclaim Jesus Christ. Why is that? Why is it okay for any other religion, any other belief out there? But when it comes to Christianity and Jesus Christ, why is that so offensive? I'll tell you why. He's the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father but by Him. Neither is there any other name under heaven by, by which we may be saved other than Jesus Christ. He's the, he's the only way. And Satan knows this, so he wants to stop it. He wants to, to deter it. He wants to make you afraid, ashamed, whatever the case may be. But we can't afford to be ashamed, not only for others, but for ourselves. Jesus said, if you be ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you when you come before me and my Father and the holy angels. It's time to stand up, America. It's time to be bold, American Christians. We claim to be 77, 74%, whatever it is, Christian nation. 30-some percent of those claim to be born again or have a born-again experience. How in the world can a nation that has that proclamation and has the history that we have can have aborted 57 million babies, murdered them, have a thing like Planned Parenthood going around there selling baby, baby body parts, have persecution going left and right, have gender identity issues to where not only the the secular movement, but the actual companies like Target are getting involved in it, trying to confuse children on whether they can be a boy or a girl, or they can just decide on what their identity is. It doesn't matter what they're born. It's whatever they decide to be. All this stuff is wicked, ignorant, and it's a plot of Satan to destroy the family, destroy the the uh, the morality of our country. If, if, if he can destroy our families, if he can cause a revolution in the family, strip the power away from the family. Case in point, most of our crime is committed by people that grew up in families without a father. We see whenever there's uh, same-sex marriages and there's gay parents, there's children being raised in that environment. All these things, the gender identity problems, all this stuff is to confuse the family, confuse children. It was Hitler that said if he could separate the, the kids from their parents in Germany, then he could take that nation. He could take Germany. we got to recognize what it is. It's sin, it's wickedness, and it's attack on our country. It's attack on our spiritual freedoms. And I want you to understand this. The revolution was started 
and finished on the cross. Hallelujah. It's not that we're going to lose the battle. It ain't that we're going to lose this war. The war's already been fought and won. It was fought on that cross. But we are blessed to stand and do battle for Jesus Christ to bring Him glory and honor. How do we do that? By having faith in Him, allowing Him to use us and work through us. He's given us the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, the shoe our feet with the preparation of gospel of peace, gird our loins with the spirit of truth. The word is our sword. All of this is in Ephesians 6. That's our war. That's our armor. That's what we wear to do spiritual battle. But nothing covers our back. Why is that? Because God's army is not an army of cowards. We don't turn and run. We stand and face the enemy. And another reason, which is the most important reason, is God's got your back. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He'll make a way where there is no way. He'll open a door that no man can open. He'll close a door no man can close. He'll never leave you. He'll always be with you. He'll support you. He'll go with you. He'll empower you. He'll fight your battles for you. The battle is the Lord's. Hallelujah. Just stand. This is your moment. This is your time. You're put here for a reason. And this time and the place you're at. And that's to be a servant for Him. If you don't know Christ today and you feel an urgency in your heart, you know that something's not right. You're lost and you want to be saved today. This is your moment. You repent of your sins. You ask Jesus to forgive you. You believe that He died on a cross. He rose again for you the third day. If you'd have been the only person that ever lived, He'd have still done it. All eternity, all time has stopped at this one point right now in this video for you. God loves you that much. Your soul is that precious to Him. What are you going to do with it? Will you receive Him today? If you decide to repent of your sins, if you receive Christ today, I want you to message me. I want to hear from you and know, and I want to be able to correspond with you. Let's pray for one another. Let's share this video. Let's be encouraged and know that God is with us. If God be for us, who can be against us? Hallelujah. Until next time, let the words of our mouths and meditations of our hearts be acceptable in His sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer, in Jesus' name, amen.